All right, it's time for the hardware, science, technology, gaming, and whatever segment, because we're going to talk about whatever we want to because it's our damn show. You're watching the Tangent Hour. Microsoft 9 has been announced accidentally because of the, uh, the, the what's the guy's name, the, the, Fran the French guy, uh, uh, Crozier, is that how you say it? C-R-O-Z-I-E-R, -E Crozier. So Crozier is the president of Microsoft so. France, and uh, he told his employees that at the upcoming PR event in uh, San Francisco, that's going to be coming up um, in like a week or so, I believe. What's the date? It doesn't say here. Um, but he said that, hey, they're going to be announcing Windows 9. Yes, he told his employees that they're going to be announcing Windows 9. And, uh, of course, the PR agency, you know, Microsoft PR agency, they got in touch with ZDNet, who broke the article, and they're like, no, 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 no. Um, Windows 9 cannot be announced because Windows 9 is not what we're calling Windows 9. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> we are not calling Windows 9 Windows 9, so there was no, no Windows 9 announcement, Windows 9 not happening, no, it, maybe something big, but Windows 9 is not Windows 9. It's going to be Windows 9, I bet. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Do you think they're going to call it Windows 9, or do you, you think they're going to call it, like, Wait, what if they try to call it something silly like Windows Connect or, or Windows McCloud or something stupid? <laughs> Windows McCloud. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're probably, it, it would be interesting if they just rebranded it Windows. And it's like, if this is just going to be, you know, Windows or Windows by Microsoft or, or something suitably vapid like that. But how would you know which version you were on? I mean, like, I mean, even Android, you got Android 4, Android 3, even OS 10, you've got Android, you know, OS 10 point whatever. You know, I mean, how, how are you going to know well, which version is which? Well, recall, um, you know, before Balmer left, Windows Blue was one of the things they never could quite get off the ground because they wanted rolling releases for Windows, kind of like OS X has. So it would just be continuously updated. Yeah, well, well I think they got in trouble because everyone started spelling it B-L-E-W. <laughs> like, well, we Windows already Blue. knew that. <laughs> yeah, Windows Blue, yeah. <laughs> so now we have this. Uh, yeah. Might be... Uh, might be Windows Cloud or My Windows or something silly like that. <laughs> My Windows, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you should just call it Windows. Or you know, what was it? <laughs> Wind Blows XP. That was a good one. I enjoyed Wind Blows. <laughs> Micro Shaft Wind Blows. Guys, look that up. It was a real thing. Micro Shaft Wind Blows. And thank me later. Uh, if anybody installs that, I'll send you a slice of pizza pizza in the mail. First person that installs it and then tweets that uh, tech syndicate. With a you know an installation on old hardware of uh, Microsoft Wind Blows, I would I would like to see that just for my own amusement. I'll send you pizza, <laughs> one slice, no toppings. <laughs> they don't last as well. I got some interesting news from Nvidia. Apparently, their new Tegra processor is going to be coming out soon, and the uh, the new Tegra is going to feature um, it's going to feature Maxwell, but not the regular Maxwell that we've been seeing. Maxwell was a, usually I mean I believe it was designed to work with the 28 nanometer manufacturing process. But you know, some things happen with uh, of, of their their Fab Lab, and uh, now we're going to be having 20 nanometer Maxwell stuff, and it looks like the Tegra is going to be used, uh, you know, using the 20 nanometer manufacturing process. And right here it is in all its glory, looks pretty. But I'm hoping this will trickle down into the next generation of Maxwell or whatever you know, whatever they bring out after that. So, but it looks like their you know 2015 their their new Tegra is going to have the Maxwell GPU as its core, and that should be pretty substantial. Um, I mean, it's obviously not going to be as fast as a desktop GPU because, I mean, you can fit so many more things, so many more transistors and everything, billions of transistors onto a desktop GPU, whereas you can't fit that many. But, I mean, it's going to be cool anyway. I'm just excited about 20 nanometer. I mean, Intel just announced, I don't think this is even in this, this episode, but Intel just announced that they're going to be spending several billion to build a 10 nanometer manufacturing uh, plant in Israel. So I guess they're going they're going to 10 at Intel. Uh, that leaves AMD pretty, well, think far than, uh, pretty far behind. Yeah, I think TSMC is going to do 16 nanometer FinFET stuff. And uh, uh, it's possible that AMD will turn to the FinFET process. So that doesn't leave much time that 20 nan the 20 nanometer process would actually be used if NVIDIA switches to something like that as well. You know, it's not. This is not enough anymore. You're just holding up your phone to take a selfie. That's not cool enough anymore. And it, you know, sometimes there's a shot that you really want to get of yourself because you're so narcissistic and self-absorbed that you you, just, you have to get it. 
And um, Intel has this um, this contest going on called Make It Wearable. So a company took that and they took the idea of you know selfies. What are you doing, dog? What are you doing? <laughs> and they um, created Nixie. Nixie is a wearable camera. And I'll go over here and just show you guys a video of it. You wear it on your wrist, and then you take it off. It becomes a quadcopter, and then it can fly around and take selfies of you. It, uh, instead of wearing a GoPro, you can just have a GoPro follow you around and hover around you because the GoPro mounted to your head wasn't good enough. Whatever happened to taking pictures of your friends? Whatever happened to saying, like, hey, man, uh, go climb that rock. I'll get a shot of you climbing it. Why is it all, like, uh, yeah. I, don't even, I, I wish I could tell some stories, but, yeah, recently... I'm just really sick of people saying, here, point this camera at me. Like, no, let's all get together and, like, just, I miss the old days where it's like, hey, we're going to, I'm going to take a picture of you doing something or you take a picture of whatever. I don't know. Like, the, it's all, everyone's so self-centered self these days. Why am I going off on a rant on this when this technology may actually be interesting and handy and useful if you see it for more than just a selfie cam? But that's how they're marketing it right now. It could be a great way to get some shots of things that you're normally unable to get shots of. And I'm sure this is going to have several bugs right now because if you're doing your thing like they just showed right there, climbing a rock face or whatever, and you release the camera, um, it's going to be pretty difficult to make sure that it gets the right picture. So, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of bugs. It'll just record out, but... all the things. Yeah. It's <laughs> Edison-based, which is kind of cool. And we saw the Edison at uh, Maker Faire playing around with a bunch of Arduinos with the Edison. So, anyway. All right. Let's move right along here and let's talk about some science. So... Scientists have discovered water on um, uh, an exoplanet that's about the size of Neptune. And it's always pretty exciting when they when they discover water on something that's outside of our solar system. It would be much cooler if they discovered water on, like, let's say Mars or whatever. But, you know, apparently there's a lot of whopper. Wh whopper? There's a lot of water and a lot of vapor and that sort of thing. I mean, it's still really freaking far away, but I don't know. Why, why is I like so that we can find here? water... Well, water, I mean, liquid water is one of the requirements for life as far as we know it. As far as, so, exactly, as far as we know it. I mean, I, I don't know if the human mind can conceive of life in ways that it may exist outside of, of you know, what if there's stuff that's like not even carbon-based? I mean, like mercury-based life forms, how about it? Don't we have some of those in the, in the what depths? If, you're, what if the organic part of the civilization died out and the only thing that's left is their mechanical artificial intelligence? Is that still life? We don't know, but that could certainly live without water. Is it self-aware? <laughs> Is it even alive? You don't know. Our, our brains cannot conceive of these things. Why are all aliens in movies humanoid or, or something that we identify with? It's, I don't know. I don't know if we would be able to conceive of what it could actually be. Like, you know, we, we may actually, when we make first contact... Something, you know, this thing is going to happen and we're going to be like, ooh, uh, alien life form. And the door is going to open and like a miasma is going to float out and start communicating with us by, uh, through bioluminescence. Would it be bioluminescence? I don't even know. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I've decided. It just goes into your brain and starts messing with things. It's like, there you go. It's, it's a living miasma. All right, never mind. Let's take a look at this new exoskeleton here that fits like skinny jeans so, so the scientists here uh, at, at harvard's weiss institute have created this and basically their idea with this was to create something super compact but all of the seams and all of the different components sort of line up with your own tendons and ligaments ligaments and uh, and muscles and it's not going to really walk for you but it will, you know, if you're carrying heavy loads like backpacks and that sort of thing, or if you're, you know, you want to run faster or run farther or whatever, it can greatly assist you. And I guess the idea here is that, um, let me just turn this down. I guess they want to get to a point where stuff like this could just be used by the common person whenever, wherever. Just let me just go throw on my, my suit. Uh, I guess the biggest thing right now are the batteries and the motors, which are located um, just around the buttock area. The left and right buttock. So, yeah. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. I like that the technology is getting to the point where we actually have gummy muscles. That's one of the big things with this design is that it's not a stepper motor or a linear actuator or some other means of locomotion. That it's a 
a gummy gelatinous sort of muscle. I mean, if you've ever messed with ferrofluid, like ferrofluid in a plastic sack is like, holy crap, I've, you know, I can use an electromagnetic field and use ferrofluid for a muscle and it works as an artificial muscle. Just little experiments like that I've done with, with robotics. And it's been interesting, not anything practical, not anything anywhere near practical, but I like research into artificial muscles because artificial research into artificial muscles that are cheap and easy to produce will uh, be the basis of a robotics revolution where we have robots that are very cheap hardware but insanely sophisticated software that are doing very advanced things. And this is the beginnings of that. All right, uh, a couple more things to talk about here. This is um, downtown Seattle here. You guys just have to see this. It's pretty wild. Um, and this is a 3D holographic print. So is this uh, 3D holographic technologies getting pretty crazy these days. And if you guys want more inter interesting uh, or more, um, more information, you can check out Zscape. So I just wanted to show you guys this because it looks pretty wild. All right. Let's talk about um, flying into outer space to get, well, across the globe extremely qu quickly. And we're talking like from the UK all the way to Australia. You can get there in two hours. If you want to go from LA to uh, Tokyo, you can get there in one hour. And, and this is something that Virgin Galactic was talking about doing. Um, all they would need to do is just fly up into the, uh, basically just <laughs> up out of the earth and then back down into the earth and then... Uh, save a ton of time the cost is the big thing here how much would this cost i mean are you going to pay you know 40 50 grand to get from la to tokyo in one hour would you pay that would it be more of a tourism thing because you're you know you're flying you know way 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 above the earth i don't know i mean, that's the big thing here is i, I don't think anyone's going to pay for this but maybe i don't know it's kind of right now it's kind of only a tourism thing you know if you want to fly into the if you want to, if you, I guess if you want to fly, I, I forget. I, I, I want to say how high they, these ships are flying, but it doesn't exactly say. Suborbital. <laughs> yeah, suborbital. A little beyond thirty thousand feet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I, it just doesn't say how high it gets, and it pisses me off. Like trying to read here. Where does it say how high it actually gets? Am I missing it? Because that'll explain where it's actually going. Is it actually leaving? Uh, you know, is it actually leaving? the atmosphere i don't think so i think it is is it it doesn't what does it say that i missed that it, well it just says that so far hundreds of people have shelled out 250k to take a quick suborbital space flight with virgin galactic but are they going to be willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to have to save 12 hours flying halfway around the world yeah I so it's it's certainly well beyond thirty thousand feet Let's take a look at these crab walkers. They look like spiders and uh, they're being conceptualized in china right now this could be the future of the tank in china now that is one hell of an ATV. How would you feel if you you know you're driving around in your tank, like you do on a Sunday, and you're somewhere involved in a land war in China, like you do on a Sunday, and uh, you just happen to uh, look out your hatch like you do on a Sunday, and you see, oh, a tank-sized spider coming at you, full, with fully loaded weapons pointed in your direction. Is this a real thing? Like. Is the Chinese military actually doing this? Because I don't, it just, this seems like it's not a good idea. Well, they're so far into the concept that it makes me think that they are actually considering it. They, they haven't, it's not got the green light yet. There's no green light. But they're pretty far along as far as their concept. If you actually take a look at some of the stuff they put together, it, it looks like they are serious, at least about considering it. I don't know. What do you think it would not be? I mean, do you, what do you think it would be easy to easy to destroy? Or I guess if you lose one or two of those legs, you're in trouble. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think this this would be like a specialized thing, like one of those. Uh, like we've got these specialized vehicles for laying bridges. It's basically a vehicle that you can drive over a chasm, and it'll just go ahead and install a bridge and leave it behind. It's a really cool piece of equipment. Perhaps this type of military technology is for a has a specific application, like. We're going to walk through a forest without, you know, knocking trees down or I don't know what. Because John Deere has a, has a tree harvester that walks through the forest. But it's, uh, it, it does that for ecological reasons, not because it's superior technology. And so there may be some reason like that for this, but I can't imagine what it is. All right, let's move on and talk about gaming right now. This is going to be a short episode, guys. Sorry about that. But um, most of my time was spent getting this room ready. So I haven't really had, I'm not prepared. You guys probably obviously see that. And my ride is waiting outside right now. 
<laughs> Your ride is about to get arrested. <laughs> yeah, that was him out there honking, and then, yeah. Uh, so anyway... <laughs> Get down on the ground. Put your hands behind well, your head. This is why we shouldn't do things on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Good lord. They found you. Run. But I haven't Run. found my secret escape route. <laughs> which is directly through them. <laughs> I'll just hide in subspace until they come back. <laughs> until, they dis until they leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been meditating a lot. I can just vanish into a different frequency. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the frequency, Kenneth? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's talk about video games, shall we? Reflex. Everyone go back this game, please, because I want to play it. I'm selfishly telling everyone I'm using I'm using my power right now to tell everyone to go back this game. Just take a look at it right here. Reflex is a game that's uh, it's an arena shooter, similar to Quake and Unreal Tournament. Uh, some of the some of the movement, uh, I guess, some of the weapons uh, actually remind me of Xenotic. But it seems to be something totally on its own, and I, I, I have actually played this game. I have played this game. The movement is super smooth and nice. I like it quite a lot. Just turn off the audio real quick. Um, I actually think the movement might be better than Xenotic. So they've got a lot of the effects in there. The, you know, it lacks texture, as it were, right now. But um, the, the most interesting part of this game for me is, if you look here on the, on the list of things that you can do, is there is an in-game... Um, multiplayer map editor so you can get together with your friends much like you do in like minecraft or something and then you can build a game world and then you can play and kill each other so that that's pretty cool uh land support why every game should have land support so i think it's really cool they've made that a bullet point here and it's sad that you have to make a game like this you have to make land support a bullet point we've got more people having bad days outside uh, so anyway, guys, I would I would really like to see this game uh, happen. I can't. I, it'll be. I, we'll run a server on this game. It's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, Turbo Pixel, if you guys are watching, what's up? Thanks for making a game like this. We needed it. Um, and I'm actually. I think I might be looking forward to this more than I'm looking forward to. Um, that was a Toxic. Toxic looks pretty cool as well. Toxic looks more like Unreal Tournament. This looks more like just old school Quake fun. So I can't wait to play that. You guys can uh, follow them here on Twitter as well. It's uh, Reflex Dev is their uh, their handle. There you go. Oh, what's this? I need an age verification. What's this for? Oh yeah, QuakeCon. The Quake site. Yes, QuakeCon. Their um, 20th anniversary is going to be next year, and I want to know what you guys think. I'm just going to ask you guys a, a question in the audience. Um, last year we went there and we provided video coverage, and um, we discovered that that was our audience. When we were there, everybody was like, "Hey man, what's up?" You guys were really cool. It was awesome to see all you guys. And we ended up playing games with a lot of the members of our, of our community. So I was thinking next year, maybe we'll just get an actual booth and put a bunch of you know systems in there. And then you, can, you guys can go to the, you know, the BYOC area and play games over there. But we'll have a few systems set up. We'll get a sponsor to help us pay for the booth like MSI or uh, you know, Gigabyte or whoever else. And you know, we'll put a few systems there for us all to play on. And then you guys can come over to our booth and hang out and play some there. And then we'll, we'll just basically run around. But... I think that would make it easier for us because it was a little difficult to run around and do videos because we knew everybody and it was always like we were busy like high-fiving and shaking hands and um, I think it might be easier just to have a booth and hang out there and let you guys know where we, where we are so you guys can find us and also I don't want this to happen because you know after the event was over some people saw the videos and they're like you guys were there I was there how did I miss you what the hell so if we have a booth we'll tell you guys we're there you guys can come see us let us know what you think of that or would you rather it's just to get our cameras and run around I don't know but we'll, I'm going to listen to you guys, and you know, you tell me what you think would be the most fun. I think it'd be fun to have a booth, but I also think it'd be fun to run around. So, whatever. Anyway, um, Trine, level editor in Trine. So they have released the level editor for Trine. So now you can make your own levels in in, in, in this game. And what I think is very interesting about this is they decided not to dumb it down. Instead, they've just created a a, a wiki. So you have to go there and look. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much, you know, a, a version of what they use to make the exact game. And, uh, yeah. I like the fact that they're not making it too easy to make the, the game. I, that, I think that'll give people probably more options. So, all right. Next up, The Witcher. Um, I, I'm going to recommend this video, yeah. Pretty much all I'm going to do. <laughs> if it would play, I would recommend it. Traveling Monster Hunter. Play. All right, it's not playing. Play, come on. I'm going to refresh the page, and then it'll play. 
Oh, there we go. It's finally playing. All right, we took a look at the uh, the traveling monster hunter um, video here, and it's it's there's a lot of, I guess there's a lot of developer interviews that are happening here in this, so it's not all gameplay footage, um, but they do release you know some interesting tidbits. The coolest thing that I think uh, they released was that you can get a boat and pretty much sail from point A to point B and get around that way. That's one way you can get around. You can get your horse and use that to get around. Uh, there's a fast travel system. I will not be using the fast travel system, but uh, right now they're really just in this video they're showing how big the world is and they're trying to make it open and that's why they delayed the game you know earlier they delayed it so that they can make it more open add more stuff to it here's some awesome gameplay footage uh, but this is shaping up to be one of the biggest rpgs of 2015 designed for the pc and i believe it's also going to be available on some consoles as well maybe i, I forget not that it matters speaking of things that are going to be available on cross-platform destiny is Destiny coming to what the PC? The that fabulous the rumor game? has it, Destiny is coming to the PC. Hmm. I don't. I don't know if I even care. It's. It's been getting. It looks bad, if you ask me. I've watched some people play it on on Twitch and whatnot. I don't think it looks that good. Like that good of a game. It, the the FOV is like looking through a freaking toilet paper tube roll or paper towel roll or something. It's awful. And um. I don't know. I'm just, more excited about GTA V, which came out, you know, yeah, what, two too. years ago now? Yeah, well, nah, not that long ago. But, yeah, I'm more excited about GTA V. What is happening on the screen right now? I don't I don't even know what's happening on the screen. Yeah, so GTA We found this 5. amazing video about Destiny for you, and you yeah. should go watch that. It's, I'll just leave it on the screen here. <laughs> this is, I think this is gameplay footage, right? What the Yes, this is, is actual, ga actual game dialogue. <laughs> this is actually more interesting than the game to me. <laughs> I'm deeply troubled right now. Uh, what was I saying about... Oh, yeah, GTA V. There's a rumor out there, and if anybody can find out if this is true or not, let me know. But apparently the uh, the rumor is that um, GTA V is going to have a PC-exclusive first-person mode. And that would make GTA V, like, the coolest game. That make me really want to play it. So, yeah. And then when I can tell you, it doesn't... Go ahead. It, go ahead. I was going to say, and then all the, all the kids on console who were like... Hey, PC guys, how's GTA 5? Oh, wait, you don't have it yet. Well, now, when we get it, and it's, if it has FPS mode, I'll be like, oh, hey, console guys, how's the FPS mode on GTA? Oh, that's right, you guys <laughs> don't have it. You guys won't have mods anyway. We'll have all our mods and everything, so. Oh, the, just, uh, just well, the GTA 4 mods are insane. The GTA 4 mods make GTA 4 on the PC look better than GTA 5 on the console, but even that aside... Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not the room, whether or not there's going to be official uh, first-person support in GTA 5, unless they just really lock it down, the modders will bring that. So it's just a question of, you know, is that available on launch day or is that available a week after launch? But first-person will be on GTA 5 regardless. So modders, thanks for making that happen. If the developers don't, developers, thanks for making that happen. If you make it happen, so yeah, but we want it to happen. All right, uh, that was a really short episode. Um, Again, we'll be a little bit more uh, prepared next next week. I've put way too much time into just making this room work. I haven't had much time to actually do the the, the, the thing, the real thing here, making the videos. Because that's what I mean. That's what it all boils down to, right, guys? Making videos. Uh, videos, I think, are going to be easier to make, and that's going to be good for everybody. So, uh, really good for for us here as well. So, look at more videos, but we're going to try to make the content a little better. Do a little bit more uh, work behind the scenes. So yeah. I don't know. It's, it's all with Yay. Thanks to everybody out there. You guys are awesome. And no more shooting on Saturdays. My God, the noise in the background was ridiculous. <laughs> it said no more Saturdays. <laughs> I should be playing video games anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm dying to get back to Wasteland 2 right now. It's like sitting in there waiting for me. So I'll put this online. <laughs> and maybe I'll see you guys tonight um, in Wasteland 2. Maybe I'll stream it some later. I think I will. Yeah, I've decided. So I'll see you guys later Yay. on. Yay. All right, everybody. See you.